My name's Kayla. We're at the Cornell Airport, and this is, uh, we call it Airport Appreciation Day. The public's coming to look at planes, and the car club was going to be here, but it looks like not many of them are showing up because it's not a very nice day out. But yeah, the public's coming to look at the planes. We're letting some kids sit inside the plane, and it's pretty cool. And when did you get involved with the flying club here? Um, about a year and a few months ago. It was, I woke up one day and I decided, you know what, I want to be a pilot. So I, I came down and I started, I talked to some guys here, got a tour, and now they've been taking me up in their plane, showing me the, the stuff about it, and I've been taking some flight lessons up in Prince George. So truly it was, um... Just one night you didn't think about it, hadn't, and then the next day you're like, "This is it." No, yeah. no other inspiration, or no, I don't, I don't really know. I think there was, oh, there was this one time where there was a, like a work BC, I think it was, thing that came to our school, and there was a flight simulator there, and I got to use it, and I was, I thought that was really cool. I guess I could say that's what started me on it, but yeah, I basically just woke up and was like, you know what, that'd be really cool. And tell me about the the process so far that you've been through and that maybe that's ahead for this the training that you need to do. So I, um, I'm in cadets, so that helps. I get a little bit of training out of that. I can get my license through cadets, but it's a lot of, it's, it's like a competition. You have to compete with other people to be able to get into the programs and stuff. So what I've been doing is I've been going up to Guardian Aerospace in Prince George, where I've started a ground school which I completed, I'm taking it twice just to get the information a bit better and so I do that, pay a bit for that, do the school, I do it online um, and then I go up there once in a while and do some flight lessons and I go up in the plane, they teach me like certain certain things every time and soon we'll be starting to learn stalls and stuff and how to get out of them and I think that'll be pretty fun. Um, sometimes I hear flight school, you know, about hours that you need to put in. Um, what are the hours of ground school versus in the air that you know of that needs to happen? Well, I'm pretty sure it was, from my recall, it was like around, I think it was 45 hours ground school, which is just like on the ground, book stuff, book work, and, and then in the sky if you want to solo, so fly your plane by yourself. I'm pretty sure, um, not 100% sure though, so uh, that it's 10 hours to solo, but you probably end up needing more than that just because you gotta you gotta learn stuff you gotta make sure you're confident in it and then to um, get your private I'm not I forget how much exactly but I'll probably end up needing like a lot of hours like in the hundred probably before I I, I will be confident enough because it's it's a flying machine you can't just pull over <laughs> Yeah, what have you found uh, challenging or, you know, from what you thought it was to the expectations and then to really getting into it? It's it's a lot of it's a lot of work. I'm in I'm in grade 10 right now, so I have school on top of all my flight stuff, and it's it's like 45 hours of ground school is a lot to compre comprehend. Like there's a reason why not you don't normally see teenagers in planes. It's it's a lot of information, and I think the most the hardest part is just being able to to comprehend it all and remember it all because it's just it's just so much. Um, is there a good equivalent, or is there something in school that's helped you? Like, is math helpful, or I don't know, science? Um, I've found math can be helpful, yeah, because there's a lot of like little equations that you need to know for like weight and balance, and, and like where the center of gravity is, and you have to. Like, know the weight of the plane and the weight of everything in it, so you know where everything needs to be and how, how long you can fly on a one tank of gas, and it's, so math helps a lot. And then I'll be taking physics next year, so that'll be, that'll be really helpful for it. Um, I hear, is this the plane you've spent the most time in? What, can you tell me more about this particular plane? Yeah, this is uh, Grumman. It's, um, it's Dave's plane. It's not my plane. Um, but he's been taking me up and showing me showing me around. This is his seat. He's in the pilot. And I, he lets me control it. And I learn a lot from him. It's, he's been really helpful. He takes me up and shows me how things work and all that. And it's, yeah, it's a really nice plane. It's a little two-seater. Looks like there could be a seat in the back, but it's not enough room. It's, it's a really nice plane. And when you, 
you said I want to be a pilot. I mean, do you are you thinking about it as a, a career or for pleasure? Um, definitely for pleasure. I love being in the sky. It's it's very beautiful up there. It's very fun. Um, but for um, for a career, yes, yes, I'm hoping to be a career for 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 a career. My dream is to be able to fly one of the snowbirds, but that's pretty pretty up there. It's a lot of work if I ever want to do that. But yeah, I do want to do it for a career. And uh, I. Maybe what have you said to your friends, or what would you say to other young people thinking about this, um, yeah, this path? Um, don't give up. Stick with it. It's it's very overwhelming at first, but once you get over that little bit, that's just really hard. It's it's so much fun. It's so worth it. And uh, how many are most weekends? Are you here now? Like especially, at, I suppose. Obviously, this doesn't happen in the winter. Mm-hmm. Um, what is it? A time commitment for you now? Um, well, there's meetings here every Saturday that I come to, flying club meetings that I'm par- a part of in Quinell. So I come to those, we talk about planes, talk about plans, and once in a while, every couple weeks, we go up and we go fly around Quinell, or we go out to Gibraltar Mine, do a little circle around there. A while ago, we went up, uh, did a circle around the Bowering Lake chain, which is really pretty. Um, yeah. And um, I met your mom. Are your are your parents involved in this at all, or were, or now are have they just learned alongside you? Um, yeah, my mom's learned a lot from just like being over my shoulder, seeing what I'm doing. But um, yeah, they, they they're not pilots. I think my mom thinks maybe my like great grandpa used to be a pilot. She she's pretty sure. But other than that, I'm the first one. These are the controls. The main controls. The yoke. Um, these, you push it up and down, and it controls the, the, oh, look at me forgetting the words, but if you look back there, if you t- t- take a film back there, if you see me pulling these back, that moves, and that's what moves the plane up and down, and then if you move it side to side, it moves the flaps on the side, that's what we, how we turn the plane in the sky. This heat button here, I master's off so I can press it, it's how you communicate with air traffic control which is all the guys up in the tower. We don't have one here, so we communicate with Williams Lake. Um, this is the mixture, the throttle, so speed and stuff. Um, right here is the fuel gauge, so this shows us how much fuel is in each wing. There's one on each side. Um, radio, all that. Um, this is the power here, and if I had the keys in my pocket, put them in here, and that's how I can how I control the pe- propeller, turn it on. Um, this is the altimeter, shows you how high how high you are, your um, altitude. And then this is the vertical speed indicator. So um, if your nose is pointed down, it'll be down here and it shows you what rate you're um, going up or down in the sky. So if you're climbing or descending. Um, this shows how many rotations the, um, the propeller is doing. Um, this is the artificial horizon. It's a little wonky right now because we're on the ground, but it shows um, where you are in, um, like compared to the horizon. Shows you if you're pointed down or up or sideways. It's it's pretty helpful most of the time. With me though, I just look out the window and figure that out. That's the compass, and then this is a little clock not on right now and then this if I turn this on it turns on the um, gyroscope that's inside and then it that's that's the um, spinning noise I don't know if you can hear that on there and then put the headset on and you can communicate through there you could hear it you could hear yourself speak when you speak it in this but you have to have it really close to your mouth which I find very annoying but it's pretty cool but yeah let's turn that off there and is this set up pretty standard across the board in terms of the airplanes we see here? Oh yeah, all of this stuff, it's, this is what you see in every plane, it's all the same. Every plane is, has this. The commercial planes obviously have like way more buttons and stuff and normally digital screens, but for the basic small private planes, this is mostly what the setup is in every plane. And I guess, are, are the yokes always connected th- that way, where there's a pilot? Pilot, co-pilot, I guess. Yeah, some planes, um, 
most pl there, there's a lot of planes that are like two seats and then the controls you move one the other one moves but in other planes there'll be like one seat behind the other and it's the same sort of deal there's a there's um one of these in the back but normally it's not one of these it's a a stick one but then it's in the front and the back seat but yeah there's there's always two in the front if it's a if it's a two seater like this or one in the front one in the back Thank you. Yeah. And maybe, cool. what is that, is that for Oh, this, yes, this is the navigation. If it was on, there's a, I don't know if I could turn it on, there we go. So on, you could see, um, tells me not to use it as my primary source of navigation. Gotta make sure I know my maps and stuff. Um, you can see the map there, and that's the little plane, and it'll show me I can... I can program it so, like, if I'm way out towards Barkerville, I can program it to tell me this. There'll be there'll be a line, and it'll be basically a straight line right back to Quinnell, depending on how I program it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's just digital map, GPS. Yeah, turn it off.